Across this barren and gray landscape sits a colorful and bright import of the tropics. This incredible casino and hotel closed in 2002, and for more than 20 years has sat untouched and completely abandoned. Join me today as I discover what's inside the unbelievable ruins of a hotel which was only open for three years, the horrifying natural decay deep within the building, and the vast entertainment facilities now long forgotten. I'll take you through the rarely known history and uncover how this nearly brand new $100 million casino hotel failed so quickly. We're starting off here, in the hotel lobby. The complex is essentially divided into three distinct areas. The hotel tower, the restaurant, and the entertainment. With very bold colors, the building's last owner had decorated it in a distinctive Caribbean theme. Something I immediately noticed was the very slow decay of the drywall. You can see that over the last 20 years, the humidity and stagnant air has resulted in mold growing on almost every surface of drywall. It's an interesting look at how decay can very slowly creep through over a long period of time, even if there isn't catastrophic water damage. And this will continue on as we ascend upwards into the tower. The Caribbean theme is prevalent here too, down these rather unsettling and nearly pitch black hallways. Now all the rooms on every floor were empty, just the outline of the bed frames, the wall theming, and the curtains remain. Some of these hotel rooms were probably only slept in for maybe a hundred nights or so. This tower after all, was only in use for around 22 months. The higher we got, the more water damage there was. This included the penthouse suite, with mold spores dominating the otherwise pristine surroundings. This property has an established history well before this tower was even built. In 1990, the state legalized riverboat gambling. This area then saw a flurry of casino companies move in, constructing permanent barges with the casino built on top of them. While they were technically floating, thus adhering to the state's law, most of them were just built in small man-made ponds. This one was the first, as it opened in 1993 as Harris Casino. But they soon outgrew this location and opted for greater expansion in the area and shuttered their casino in 1997, waiting to find a buyer. They found one two years later when they sold the property to a Caribbean-themed casino company in 1999, when they reopened it under a new name. They immediately drafted up plans to expand the property in the year 2000 with the addition of a 227-room hotel tower and an entertainment complex with two theaters. This expansion came at the cost of $44 million, on top of the $24 million it had already cost them to renovate. Man, everything has mildew on it here. Jeez. This is a moldy nightmare in here. Jeez. <laughs> this is one of the moldiest places I've ever seen. What 
down the scary tunnel of doom. Hold your step. This is all just mush. I can't believe how bad this is. The moisture in here is insane. Oh my God. Holy crap. You know what this was? This was a buffet, I bet. This was a tropical themed buffet. I have never seen anything like this before. Yeah, because in the middle here, this is where the food was served probably. And then they had like tropical themed umbrellas. You can see that one's still in place. I don't think I've ever seen a modern building with a room this bad. Can you imagine people were eating dinner in here? Look at that. Desserts. God, get us the hell out of here. These are the bathrooms. Look how decayed that door is. This must have been the other side of the buffet. Oh my god. This is... I don't have words. Other than disgusting. Look at how the how the paneling is just starting to come off. Despite their recent and very expensive expansion to the property, the casino was struggling. Fierce competition in the area harmed their bottom line, and the property became known as the casino with the worst payouts and one that catered to old people and bus tourists. By early 2002, the resort failed to turn a profit since opening, and with their parent casino brand as a whole struggling, they decided to cut their losses and sell the property. They had already invested well over $77 million in total, and within three years, the whole operation was shut down for good. After all that money was spent, they let the property go for just $7.5 million, selling it to the neighboring casino who temporarily utilized the hotel rooms in the tower. Other than that, the structure was left abandoned and without a future. Fast forward to now, and the years of no intervention have done permanent damage here. The restaurants we just walked through look like they've been in a jungle for 40 years or raised from an underwater shipwreck. Well, actually, it's not far from it, as in 2011, this whole area experienced a massive flood, severely damaging many of the casinos in the vicinity. This property was one of them, and it appears that this section of the casino was the lowest in elevation, therefore the most susceptible to the floodwater. While we can't be absolutely sure, we did find this room which may show evidence of a flood water line. All of these rooms were absolutely soaking wet, and despite the roof appearing to be in rather decent condition, the decay in here was truly the worst I have ever seen for a modern structure. But strangely, this only applied to the direct center of this building. Bizarrely, just a door away was the surrounding hallways, which were in vastly different and much better shape. It's astonishing what two different worlds they are.
this garbage bag lined wall is the only exception to the clean looking hallways. That's because this was the interior entrance to the casino itself. Like many others in the area, it was on a floating barge. It was also left abandoned for some time, until around 2008, when a special channel was dug and the casino barge was completely demolished. Today, that explains why there's a large fountain and a pathway to nowhere. The man-made pond is completely overgrown with trees and seems to be drained. This grand entrance was supposed to be the main attraction here, leading guests into a pair of two massive theaters. Oh. My god. The largest of the two is the Flamingo Bay Theater, which can seat 1,280 people and was supposed to be the flagship venue for entertainment in the area. In reality though, the performances were scheduled at weird times of the day, the quality of the performances had declined over a very short period of time, and the attendance was abysmal. Some reports claimed that just a few dozen people would show up on certain days. Clearly, their investment here did not pay off. I think it's worth noting that I strongly encourage you not to visit this location. Police use it as a training facility, security is on site, and the level of mold in here is legitimately dangerous. If you do though, exercise extreme caution and please do not vandalize steel or destroy anything in here. After seeing all of this, you can't help but ask how some company hasn't put all of this to use yet. Well, in 2009, a newly formed corporation purchased the property and announced plans the following year to redevelop it into a wilderness-themed hotel and casino, all at the cost of close to $100 million. Architectural drafts were drawn up and the concept seemed to have a good chance of moving forward. Their plan was to expand the structure from the service hallway out to create a brand new gambling floor. However, this was all one year before the flood. The resulting damage both economically and to the building itself had put an end to this concept's viability. Those same developers continued to hold and still own the property to this very day, still paying their yearly property taxes, some $19,000 a year. Until the local government pushes for development or the company decides to finally put their land to use, this property will just continue to rot away. In late 2021, a massive section of the southern facing wall of the tower had just collapsed following a windstorm. All of this is just a level of decay you don't typically see. It's a truly unbelievable situation, with a structure basically brand new and barely used, only for it to sit undisturbed for more than two decades. With the local community now in shambles and not a ton of new development on the horizon, it's really difficult to try and imagine a business case that will ever bring this building back. Thanks for joining me on this extremely rare look into an abandoned place like no other. My name is Jake, and thank you very much for watching. Thank you.